this is going to be a complete companion guide for you guys. So to start, we're going to go over elemental damage. Okay, you see this wind damage right here, 952%. This number is coming from this formula. Okay, so this is how it's calculated. Each page of companions, there are seven different advancements. So on two pages, there's 14. And on the third page, this is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So my LE is on number 19 for advancements. So 19 minus 2, right here you see the formula, is 17. Okay, So 17 times her level, which is 56, will give you the number of 952. This is important to know because if you want to pump your elemental damage, for example for Zeke, you can do it the most efficient way, which is either leveling up the cheap skill or maybe just pushing the next investment will give you 46% additional uh, elemental damage. Okay, So that's the first thing. The second thing is each companion needs to have 20% attack for all promotion options, okay? Every single one of your companions needs to be 20%. I covered this in the progression guide before, but just to reiterate. And also, one thing to know about rolling these is you want to roll for 20% without locking different other tiers. For example, if you see right here, right? You can get red tier and purple tier. Do not lock them. I've seen people lock them before, and that's just going to slow you down. So what I'm going to explain to you is uh, the cost of re-rolling for dice, okay? So for example, right here, right, you have seven different promotion options, okay? Each time you lock one, it gets more expensive by five dice. But this is actually a little bit tricky because each time you lock one, it gets more expensive but you also are rolling for one less. So by the end of it, when you have six locked on the seventh one, it takes 35 dice to re-roll just a single one, okay? Versus, for example, you have everything unlocked. To re-roll this, all seven of them, it takes five dice. So if you look over here, it's five divided by seven at 0 0.7 dice. So if you click reroll right here, this five dice, you're actually only using 0 0.7 dice per reroll compared to the end where you're using 35 per reroll. That is very significant, okay? So do not lock, do not ever lock red and purples. Just you either go all the way or not at all pretty much, okay? You can stay on blue, on blues, on uh, reds, on purples, whatever. You can still keep them. If you don't have enough dice, you can still keep the purple one or keep the red one. Just don't lock it. It's going to make it more expensive. And one thing I want to show you is if you are close to page 3 advancements, you will unlock something called highest option. You see this right here? What this going to do is if you click on this it's going to change all your promotion options to the one you want that's the highest option for 40,000 dice okay so if you're missing them by the time you hit this you can do that but other than that this is not very useful um, there's no reason to be switching them every day to farm because if you switch it to go to go farm stages, you're going to need to switch it back for like rift and stuff. That's 80,000 dice down the drain. Uh, just go ahead and use your dice and roll for weight and power once you finish all this, okay? So the next thing we're going to cover is uh, the passives, okay? This is the most important part, I guess, of the video besides the skills to actually complete the companions. The most important passive for Ellie is going to be your Son of Elf and your Elves Heim. Okay, these two are going to be the most expensive ones to level, but it's also going to be the most important ones. Okay, so for Son of Elf, the reduced enemy HP 
This works on everything. It works on normal mobs for farming. It works on bosses. So your bosses will have less HP the, the higher you get Son of Elf. So if you look at a chart for Son of Elves, the higher the level of Son of Elf, the, the bigger the efficiency of it. For example, if this is like, say, only 5%, right? 5% less boss HP is not a lot. But reducing the boss HP by 50% is massive and that's what's gonna cap out at all these passives or cap out at level 100 as you can see here um that being said though focusing on elfsheim and son of elf will get more and more expensive so when it gets to a certain amount for example you see intensive fire is relatively cheap so i've been actually leveling intensive fire a little bit just to get my elemental damage up but also it's accuracy is good okay so Besides Son of Elf and Elfsheim, you're going to focus on Blessing of Forest. When Blessing of Forest is cheap comparatively to Son of Elf, you want to put some points into here. And the same for Intensifier. Because I maxed my Blessing of Forest, when it's cheap, I'm going to do Intensifier instead of the Blessing of Forest. Okay. So, Windsong is a trap. Do not get Windsong. I know Souls is important for Soul Weapon, but trust me, you're going to get more than plenty of of souls okay look at this you're gonna get more than plenty of souls so do not bother boosting them it's a trap go ahead and boost the other important skills okay so one thing about passive 2 right passive 2 will be unlocked after you beat the page 3 okay so for example this is page 3 right fairy light when you beat fairy light for Ellie you're gonna unlock wind song you're gonna unlock elves high when you beat Rose, it's gonna skip one for Storm Ranger, and by the time you beat Mystic Breeze, you're gonna unlock this Wind's Understanding. Okay, so Wind's Understanding is not bad. I mean, Wind Damage, Supersonic, good for farming, Red Lightning, things like that. It's not bad, but again, if you want damage, Elf Song is good damage, and so is uh, the other ones. But like I said, if it's cheap, go ahead and put some points into this one. Same for the wind song. If it's cheap, go ahead and put some points into here. That principle is going to follow for the rest of them, okay? So, for example, for Zeke, the most important one for Zeke is Blade Dance and Ductility's Wisdom. These two are the most important passives. Cube is very important, okay? Cube is what's going to progress your weapon and your account. You see how much cube it requires? And this will actually buff your daily riff. So with this event active, with this event buff every day, I'm getting extra 200%. This stacks with a scrolls buff of 200% enhanced cube. And again, it stacks with this as well. So every day for X3 rift, I'm getting 100 million cubes. Because of the activities wisdom. Okay, so blade dance is the other important skill and what blade does is it gives you attack sum you might be wondering what is attack sum attack sum is another layer of multiplier for your damage okay so this 100 percent 120 percent it's not the same as this right here okay this you see this is just normal attack all this does is gives you like 20 percent extra attack attack sum takes into account every single attack buff you're getting from weapons, from class, from uh, spirits, from promotions, all that gets multiplied again by this number, okay? So it is very, very OP. It's very good. It's a whole nother layer of multiplier. It is not a flat amount. It is a multiplier. I want to reiterate. It. I want to make sure you guys understand that, okay? So next thing we're going to do is go over what lunatic is okay so lunatic is crit damage it is not crit damage sum meaning this is just a flat amount of crit damage okay so one point of crit damage right here is going to increase one point of crit damage here however keep in mind when you level this up you might notice it gives you more than what's displayed here okay with it doesn't mean that you're getting more from lunatic okay you're only actually getting more from your relics. Relics is a tax sum. So this is roughly 60%. So 
This will multiply all your crit damage by 60%. So when you level this up, you might get, say, 2% crit damage. You're actually going to get around 3% just because of the relic. So this is a flat amount. It's not very good. And for Fortitude, um, it's okay to level up when it's cheap because Zeke is very important. Earth damage is the most important element in this game, okay? Er because Earth damage will boost your Demon Hunt. Demon Hunt is the hardest hitting skill in this game. And it is going to be your main bossing skill later on. And like as you see here, you see on the skills, every single companion late game on the third tier skill slot they use demon hunt even though demon hunt is 0 0.7 damage weaker versus fire you still use it just because it does so much damage so that is why it is important to be boosting zeke's okay zeke is also going to be probably your lowest companion because he's expensive to level and most of your levels are going to be focused into blade dance and ductility's wisdom and these are very expensive skills And for his passive number two, right? Earth Understanding is good to level as well. Um, at the beginning, Earth Understanding is going to give you 1% per level. But like you see here, right now I'm getting 2% per level. This is level 20, I'm getting 30%. Um, so level 1 to 10, I'm, I was getting 1 per level. From 10 to 20, I was getting 2% per level. Uh, this will, in return, buff this number right here so when he reaches five out of five i will get an extra 46 uh, percent sorry not 46 percent. i meant it's going to go to 47 level and then i'm going to get an extra i think he's tier 18 right now in promotion so i'm going to get an extra 18 percent uh earth damage like with this formula remember this formula we did earlier so Oh no, he's he's tier 18. So 18 minus 2 is 16. 16 times 47 would be uh, 752. So when he levels up to 47, he's going to be at 752. And for Miho, okay, for Miho, you're going to be focusing on Gold Rush, okay? So Gold Rush is Gold Sum. It's very confusing. I know the game doesn't tell you this <clears throat> this is not a flat percent okay so one percent here does not equal one percent here it's actually all your gold multipliers from weapons from everything from spares all that combined increased by this multiplier again and this gold rush mult is a uh, stackable with gold rush 2 okay so gold rush 2 is a lot better to be leveling than gold rush uh, just because Gold Rush gives you 1% per level. And Gold Rush 2 gives you 2% per level. So 54 times 2, 100 equals 108. And also you see the cost. 7,500 stones and 1,250 emeralds for 2%. Versus 2,500 emeralds and 7,700 for 1%. Um, if you want, actually, I would recommend you to leave Gold Rush at level 40, okay? By the time your Gold Rush hits, like, level 40, maybe even 35, depends how fast you push or how much you're spending on this game, you're going to be unlocking Gold Rush 2. So save it for Gold Rush 2 just because it's so much cheaper. And uh, Fire Damage is good because of Pillar Fire and also Hellfire Slash, very good skills to be... Uh, leveling up but do it when it's not expensive compared to a like gold rush okay but also if you're if you don't care that much about gold towards the end you can dump some levels into flames understanding but also you do want to be leveling shadow dance and shadow step they are just pure damage reduction so they're good to level of course when it's cheap but again try to focus on gold rush so you can be maxing out uh your enhanced like your death strike max, your death strike uh, damage max, crit max, crit damage max, all that. When you only have attack to level up, that's when gold gets slightly less useless. Get, sorry, gets less useful and more useless. So at that point, you can maybe dump some levels into Flames Understanding. But also, do oh, please do avoid red greed. Red greed is a trap. 
The only way, the only reason to level Red Greed is when it's really cheap and you want to be boosting fire damage. <clears throat> and dodge is important, so you can also dump a lot of levels to max out dodge as well. Same for Shadow Step, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and show you something right here. I actually have enough Firestones and Emeralds to be leveling Gold Rush up again. So I'm going to level Gold Rush up and get 2 extra percent Gold Sum, okay? This is Gold Sum. It's a multiplier, like I said earlier. So 2%, you'll see how much this increases by, okay? So right now, my total extra gold is 51,119, okay? That's my gold right there. I'm going to get 2 extra percent from Miho. Now it's at 110 versus 108. And okay, my gold sum. Oh, I mean, my total gold. 51,521. You see how much of a boost? That is not 2%. That is not a flat 2%. So let's do go ahead and minus that. So I got an extra 402% gold from one tap of this skill. Okay, I, I tapped this skill one time, leveled it up, and got 2 extra percent. I got a whole 400% extra gold here. That is why Gold Rush is stupid. It's stupid OP. Uh, so for Luna, your primary focus for Luna is going to be mana recovery, okay? So max out your mana dope as soon as possible. I know Wisdom of War and Mana Amp is kind of tempting if you don't know what they do. Or, you know, you just see skill damage or go, I gotta get it. But it's super expensive compared to mana dope. This is a first skill of each companion. is the cheapest one to level, okay? And thankfully for Luna... The most important skill she has is the cheapest one. So you want to be maxing that out as soon as possible, okay? You want your mana regen as high as possible because you're going to be eating a lot of mana. And you also just don't want to worry about it later on. You just kind of just max it and just not worry about it. Uh, the next thing you want to do after you max mana dope is Wisdom of War. Wisdom of War is going to be a very good skill because it gives you skill damage, meaning you pretty much get 60% extra damage here. Because all you're doing in this game is using skills. You're not really auto-attacking besides to activate the skills, and they don't even do that much damage. So skill damage is very good here. This is similar to your skill proficiency, all attribute damage. All attribute damage just means all elemental damage, which you know translates to skill damage. Mana Amp is not very important, okay? You can actually leave Mana Amp at like level 30. Even just leave it at 30, you should be good for a long time. I only level it up a little bit just, you know, to get water damage so my Blizzard does a slightly more damage. But that was before I had Passive Page 2, before I was able to unlock Passive Page 2. Um, getting Passive Page 2 and Total XP is also very good. Same for uh, C's understanding. This right here, you see this right here, I'm going to level up for you. You see this is 31% extra HP, right? I mean XP, right? Right now I have 999.2 XP. When I level up Luna, I'm going to go ahead and get 1% of XP. So this, after leveling up, you see right here, goes to 1007. Yes, again, this is XP sum, okay? It is not... It is not flat XP. It is XP sum. So it's it's good to have because pushing levels is very important. You get more attribute points, but also it increases your growth. Okay, so the higher level you are, the the more your growth and the higher value this is. So that's why Luna's uh, passive Heim of Abyss is good. But again, it's not as good as Wisdom of War. Okay, you want to be focusing Wisdom of War after Mana Dope. Only level up Heim of Abyss or sees understanding when it's cheap. I've just been focusing Wisdom of War this whole time. So I leveled up my Abyss just to show you guys. But yeah, Wisdom of War is where you want to be focusing on. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is cover how to get stones. Okay, you see the stones right here? You're going to get roughly about 7,000 to 8,000 stones um, on the high end, I would say, for farming 18 mobs per wave. You see right here, my I'm farming stage 465. Right here, monsters per wave 18. What that means, 
I covered it in my farming video. What that means is there's 18 mobs per wave of minions here, right here. And every single mob has the same drop rate, by the way, okay? So if you go to like a 4 mob per wave or an 18 mob per wave um, around the same level, they give you the same amount of stones. The reason why 18 mobs per wave gives you more stones, even though the mobs themselves, like one at a time, drop the same amount, is because there's more things to kill. Like you're pretty much, think of like a MMO setting, you're grouping up a huge leash of mobs, you, like you leash a whole group of mobs and then you kill them at the same time, it's going to be faster farming than in an MMO where you're just farming like four at a time, you know? Instead of four at a time, we're farming 18 at a time. So that is why 18 mobs per wave gives you more resources, even though the mobs in themselves have the same drop rate. So that's how you're going to be getting stones, just AFK farming 18 mobs per wave, okay? And then the next thing we're going to go over is uh, the spirits for completing them. Uh, for spirits, you're going to be using bossing spirits. Bossing spirits, it's the same setup as the bossing video. Just uh, Sala, Noah, her, and Laura. Uh, you can pick, use what you have. Pick just three of them. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Uh, because the fights do last longer, Noah is slightly less effect effective in companion fights than stage fights, okay? Because companion fights are a lot longer fight than stage fights, so the last five seconds, proportionally, is less of a um, uh, part of the fight. And then uh, one thing for uh, companions is you're going you're to be needing emeralds, okay? So to cover emeralds, how do we get emeralds? Emeralds uh, you will be getting from trading dailies, okay? So go to your shop, go to your goods, and go to right here at the bottom, okay? So this is how you're going to be getting emeralds. I covered this in the progression video, but I'm just going to go ahead and cover it again because it's part of companions. Um, in the this is right here we're going to be trading okay so you're going to be trading 1,000 stones of each type for 1,000 emeralds yes you do need stones to level them to level your companions but what's the point of stones if you don't even have the emeralds to level them so that's why it is very important to be trading stones for emeralds because you'll be getting more stones then emeralds every day okay if you never trade you're going to be short on emeralds at the beginning of the game you might be you know have a massive amount of emerald but trust me it's all going to go away very quickly especially when you start speeding up farming for stones that's when you, all your emeralds going to go away the other trade is dice okay you can trade 10,000 dice a day for 1,000 emeralds this is recommended when you have maxed everything, okay? When your companions are all maxed and you have no more use for dice, or when you go into your character promos and you max all your abilities, you have no more use to dice, you can trade your dice every day, 10,000 of them for emeralds, okay? The rest of your dice, you're gonna be putting into weight and power to just reroll your weight and power. You see this advanced reroll, you're gonna be rerolling for weight and power. Uh, but however, you know, this is going to take a long time and you're going to be farming more than 10k dice a day. You're going to be farming roughly maybe like 70, 80k dice a day if you're farming 18 mobs per wave. So using one eighth or one seventh of that amount of dice per day to get uh, 1k emerald is very important. The other source of emerald is going to be your adventures. You see adventures, these are one time clears. So yeah, unfortunately you do it once, it's gone. Same for story. Story is a very good source of emeralds, but again, it's a one-time clear, and once you finish it, you won't have that emerald source. However, in the future, do you keep an eye out? Because at the moment, we only have uh, chapter one of story. In the future, you will get chapter two, like episode two of story. When you have episode two of story, uh, or episode three even more in the future, depends on when you watch this video, you can go ahead and get emeralds that way as well, okay? So for, the next thing we're going to cover is actually the skills themselves, okay? So each companion has a different mechanic uh, later on on page 3. But from just the beginning, page 1, this is page 1 by the way, even though it doesn't say 1, it says advancement, this is page 1, okay? So page 1 companion and page 2 companion, the mechanic for every single companion 
is that you cannot use the same element as a companion, which you should probably all know. So right here, tier one skill and tier two skill of each of these two companion is aimed at page one and two, okay? So when you have page one and two companion fights, you can use the first two skill builds for each of the companions. For example, for Ellie, right here, uh, the tier one actually doesn't use nine slots. I know I put nine skills here, but this is just to help you out. Because for example, I put life mana here, just in case you don't have enough mana. Uh, because if, you're, if you don't follow what I recommended and you're just, you know, or even you're just super new and you don't have enough stones yet and your mana recovery is not very high, um, I put life mana here to help you with your mana drain. But again, if you're new, you can drop the last two skills. You can drop meditation, you can drop life mana, okay? You can just use these first <clears throat> seven skills, right? okay? Same for Zeke. You can drop these two last skills. You can drop fire boss, you can drop uh, mana blessing to have seven skills. But, you know, if you do have an eighth slot, definitely put fire blast in. If you have a mana problem, you can put uh, mana blessing. If you don't have a mana problem, you can just use Fire Blast, okay? And with eight skills. If you have like nine or 10 skills, you honestly shouldn't be here. You should move on to the next tier. Same for uh, Miho. Miho, you can drop the last two skills if you have seven slots. Or if you know if you don't have a mana issue, use uh, Flowing Blade. Same for Luna, again, drop the last two slots. So this is a seven skill build. If you do have an extra slot, this is what the skill you wanna be putting in, or this is the skill if you have mana issue. So for the tier two of these companions, it's pretty much an upgraded version of the tier one build, except with full slots. Again, you probably don't have 10 slots. Um, I, you can drop Iron Will or Giga Impact here. You can drop the last two skills here, okay? You can just pick one and drop one of them. Uh, med is very important because med will keep a 100% uptime for these two skills. Same here, if you don't have Purifier, don't use Purifier, use these first nine skills. For Miho, same idea here. Miho's damage skills are kind of limited just because uh, water skills kind of suck, like water DPS skills kind of suck outside of Blizzard. So right here, uh, if you don't have Blizzard, which you probably don't for mid game players, then you're kind of just stuck, okay? This is where you're gonna be running. You can run more, um, whatever. You can even put like say ice time in there if you want or Ice Shower. It's very limited on skills, unfortunately. So this is what you're gonna be running. And again, if you're dying, Miho does, does start doing more damage later on. You might notice you're actually dying against Miho before the timer runs out. You can put Life Mana in. For Luna, the same thing here. Uh, Luna, not a lot of good DPS skills for Wind against Luna. So that's why we have uh, Giga Impact here, okay? So Giga Impact, as you can see here in the combat, Attribute Giga Impact is Earth. Earth does not have reduced damage against water. Um, it doesn't have increased damage either. It's just a straight X1. So that's why Giga Impact is okay. Just because it hits so hard. If your power strike is higher leveled, like mine is, mine is level 10 power strike versus uh, level 1 Giga Impact, my power strike actually does more damage than my Giga Strike. You can go ahead and put Power Strike here, okay? So you can go ahead and calculate. So 3 times 750 versus 2 times 1254 for me. And for Luna, you can go ahead and drop um, the last skill as well if you don't have the space, okay? And for the last skill build for each of them, they it's a Demon Hunt and Rave build. You're going to be needing Rave and you're going to be needing Demon Hunt, okay? So you're also going to be needing Wog. Wog is Wrath of God. It's very important. Um, this is pretty much a modified bossing, stage bossing build, okay? So these last three, last four builds for each companions, it's a modified stage boss Rave Demon Hunt build. If you don't know how to use Rave, uh, you can look at my bossing video for a guide on that. All right, one last thing I'm gonna cover on companion fight is when you get to page three, the mechanics change because you probably notice here, you're like, wait, how are you using D 
Demon Hunt against Zeke. Demon Hunt is an Earth skill. Against Zeke, you can't use Earth skills. Well, that's only true actually in page 1 and 2 of Companions. When you get to page 3, all your skills open up. You can use whatever skill, whatever element you want. You can use the same element as a companion. However, there is a drawback, okay? The drawback is the companions get 10% extra HP per skill you're using. That's the same element as them. So if you're using one Earth skill against Zeke, Zeke will have 10% extra HP. When you use three Earth skills against Zeke on page 3, He's going to get 30% extra HP. So let's go into one of Zeke's fight and show you. You see this white HP right here? That's his extra HP he's getting because I'm running a Earth skill. Okay, so you see this Iron Will here? This is the Earth skill I'm running. And that's why he's getting that extra HP. And <clears throat> again, what the extra mechanic on top of that for that for Zeke specifically is this one okay so what's gonna happen is he's gonna jump back and summon a wall okay so watch we're gonna wait for him to unfreeze a bar will appear under him you see that charge bar he's gonna jump back summon a wall you want to break down this wall and go and fight Zeke as soon as possible okay this is my farming build this is not Zeke's build so again Zeke that's why we run double flame slash uh, flame Hellfire Slash and Flame Slash. This is to break the wall down so we can go ahead and Demon Hunt and rape the, uh, Zeke. As you see here, every pretty much every companion besides Luna uses Blizzard, okay? So why do we use Blizzard against Miho? Blizzard is weaker against fire. Blizzard is water, is weak against fire. Why do we use Blizzard against Miho? Because of the freeze mechanic. Blizzard is a guaranteed freeze, okay? So when we go into Miho, we're going to freeze her with Blizzard and then we do the combo for Raven Demon Hunt. Again, like you see here, her extra HP is coming from me using fire skills. So this is a mechanic for Miho, okay? So you saw that fog, you see that fog? Wait for her to unfreeze. She's going to summon a fog every couple seconds. And should be soon, right here. You see that fog? That fog is going to miss make all your attacks miss okay so you do not want to be autoing against miho unfortunately uh, you want to be manual casting pretty much almost everything against miho just because of that uh, fog mechanic see a uh, fog again all my attacks are missing so when you're doing demon hunt rave combo versus miho you want to blizzard her and then drop your combo before the fog hits otherwise you're gonna have to retry and uh, make sure you don't use your skills during the fog because all your skills will miss. Okay, so that's a mechanic for Miho. For Ellie, Ellie doesn't have too annoying of a mechanic. Her mechanic is that she's gonna jump back and also knock you back. Okay, so we're gonna wait for Ellie to cast. So that that bar at the bottom, that's her charge where she's gonna jump back, and that's her mechanic pretty much. Uh, you, she's gonna gap, make a gap between you and her. She will sometimes knock you back as well later on to uh, when the fight gets a little bit down. But pretty much, it's just a bigger gap than her jumping back. Uh, and for uh, Luna, Luna's mechanic is she's gonna disable some of your skills randomly. So same as the Ether promotion, actually, um, the bossing Ether will disable your skills as well. Same as Luna right here, but. Luna's disabling of skills lasts a lot shorter than Ether Boss's skill disabling. See right here? My first skill, Supersonic, got disabled. We can wait again to see the next one. And right here, this, these skills got disabled briefly. Um, she's not very... She's not very annoying, like, you know, Miho or Zeke. But there, it does... She does have that freeze mechanic. Uh, 